This is a super simple project, no circuit board needed, nothing, just scavenged components that you can just basically use whatever you can find. It's what I'd call an apocalypse project. Imagine that entire, well, the majority of mankind, obviously not you because you're still there scavenging, but imagine that uh, mankind has largely been wiped out and there's no power, no fuel, nothing, and you're just scavenging your fine solar panels and old products. You get a diode, a couple of old nickel metal hydride cells, random cells, and even some loose LEDs that could actually just be a scavenged, I'm just digging one up here, a one watt LED in its own, or better still, a string of lights, because the strings of lights are quite nice. And uh, let's grab a notepad here and just doodle something up that we can do with this. So the solar panel uh, would be something like probably about five or six volts. So say five, six volts. Um, solar panel. And the output of that would go through a diode. Let me zoom down this. Any diode. Just whatever you can find. It could be a 1N4148, a 1N4007, 001, anything you can find. Even a Zener diode would work, though it's not really optimal for the application. And we'd be using the solar panel to charge a couple of nickel metal hydride cells. I've chosen a couple. You could use three if you use a higher voltage solar panel. But I find that uh, the idea of using two nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium, if, if that's what you found, uh, that would have its own uses. Uh, the, if you had the three cells, it's got a slight disadvantage over the two cell, but would be suitable for a brighter use. Now, here's the point that this is the simple charger circuit. You've got the any energy created by the solar panel in any level of light will go in to charge these nickel metal hydride cells. I'd recommend a small one because otherwise, if you used a really huge panel, it's going to bake these cells, much like many of the solar lights do. I'm just looking for the wee button cell, not seeing a button cell that you'd find in many of solar lights that do actually get baked by cheap solar lights. So you'd choose a smaller panel, I guess this one's going to be about 50, 100 milliamp. Uh, and the number of sections of silicon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, mean this is a 5 volt panel. It's roughly half a volt per section. But any Anything generated by the sun will go into these nickel metal hydride cells and it doesn't matter, there's no charge control because as soon as they reach their upper voltage of about 1.5 volts uh, or their full capacity, because it will usually float around that before they get there, uh, all that will happen is there'll be a sort of chemical reaction inside that recycles the liberated gas and the electrodes and in back into electrolyte and they'll warm up slightly but they won't effectively overcharge. It's not ideal to absolutely leave them hammered with uh, charged current all the time, but this is kind of designed just to harvest uh, sunlight in the sense that it mo for most of you, it'll only just barely top them up, maybe halfway or more. Then across that, you've got an option. You could have just a switch and a resistor if you wanted and an LED so that just whenever you needed light, you could turn the switch on and you'd have light. So say for instance you're in a cabin somewhere, this little module is sitting there just happily charging the cells up whenever there was any light. You'd basically just add the circuit and it means you could have the option of a light on all the time uh, when you needed it with the switch. The other option is to use a resistor just straight in line with the, the LEDs. That's what I'm going to do here with the uh, this little string of LEDs. And the idea is that it means it will be lit during the day. Uh, but Whenever the sun shines, it's going to be partly making these LEDs light, but it's also going to be topping these nickel metal hydride cells up to a degree. It'll be a sort of balance. You, therefore, you wouldn't, can't really use too high a current. It's like, basically, it's a solar light, but it is just lit all the time. There's no dusk sensor. The other option, you could put two resistors in series with your LEDs, and this would allow a winter and summer mode. The top resistor there would have a switch across it. And say, for instance, this one was 10 ohm for the summer mode. Uh, whenever the switch was closed, the current would go straight through that low value resistor and it would make the LED light quite brightly. You could have, say, for instance, a 47 ohm resistor here. And it means that in winter, when there's less sunshine and you open that switch, it would add the 47 ohm in series of the 10. It just means that the intensity would be lower, but it would make the most of whatever sunshine was available. Let's build this. Noting that the negative connection is common to everything, which makes it easy. You could put the diode anywhere, really. Um, you could put it in the negative or the positive. It doesn't really matter in this application. So here's the solar panel. And 
here is the connector I'm going to use to connect to my lights, and here is the battery pack. Let's get the solder in and just cobble this together. So I'm going to twist the two negatives together and put some solder on them, and I'm going to tack them onto the negative connection of the solar panel. This is the sort of thing that if you wanted to make sort of decorative lights that are just powered all the time, I mean, this would be really nice and, you know, off-grid cabin. You could have a set of lights that basically, a, a small ornamental tree with LEDs in it, that would just stay lit all the time. It would be nice during the day with the solar power lighting it, and then when it ran off the batteries at night, it would just be quite a nice ambience it would give, uh, and also give that comforting glow in the place, but not too bright, because it would it, be night time. You'd be trying to sleep, although it helps to have a little bit of light at times. So the diode, any diode, in this case I'm using a 1N4007, because it's what I have lots of, because it's a high voltage diode, it just does everything. Uh, I'm soldering that with the band pointing away from the positive connection. Now I'm going to cut the other end short. I'm going to put some solder on it. This is such an easy project. And I'm going to twist the two positives together in this instance, noting that in this lead that I'm going to connect the LEDs, I've already got a 10 ohm resistor. The choice of resistor will depend on the size of the solar panel and how much sunshine you get locally. People in very dark climates may want to use a much higher value of resistor to limit the current more. But having said that, that's the advantage of using the two nickel metal hydride cells is that uh, as they discharge, the voltage drops to the point the LEDs will just glow gently. Um, and it, even if one of the cells, well, one of the cells won't go really flat because uh, as soon as it's below about 2.4 volts, the combined uh, voltage, the LEDs will stop conducting which is, is quite useful. It just means it protects the cells from reverse charging, as could happen with the 3-cell version. The 3-cell version does have the advantage of offering much greater brightness. That's it. The project is complete. Let's stick the batteries in. Let's plug in my little string of lights. I like, like the idea of surviving an apocalypse. I think uh, most technical people would be in a good place to do so. And I'll put the cover on. The LEDs are lit. And uh, if I was to hold this up to the bench light, it's actually, you probably won't see the LEDs will get a little bit brighter, but uh, that is it actually putting more current out than the LEDs are using. So at this point in time, it would be charging. And yet at night time, when all the light went off, I'll just take the exposure off for this you'd have your little decorative lights that just run 24-7. And as I say indoors, and if you had, say for instance, you had a little decorative tree or a, an ornament with the LEDs on it in a sort of darker corner of the room, uh, these would be lit all day long um, and, well, 24-7, um, powered by the sunshine or daylight during the day, whatever you could get, and powered by the batteries at night. And the solar panel you might get off with just putting it in the window um, but other than that, uh, you could theoretically, if you wanted more sunshine, you could mount this elsewhere. You could mount it remotely. It doesn't even have to be close to the system. You could have the battery indoors with next to the LEDs and just two wires coming down from this and have the diode mounted locally or at the solar panel itself and just put it in a waterproof enclosure uh, in distance, wherever you put it, on the roof, up on a tree, on a post, anywhere you wanted it. It's a simple project. It's a very nice project, and to be honest, I could see that being very useful in that sort of end-of-world scenario.